This is the StoryWorks Roundtable, where we have conversations about craft. Because becoming a successful author begins with writing a great story. Hello, and welcome to this week's StoryWorks Roundtable. Today, Catherine and I are having a mindset conversation, maybe a bit of a uh, coaching or mutual therapy session here with the uh, state of the world such that it is, it can be Mm -hmm. challenging to be creative and to support our creative Mm -hmm. endeavors, to support ourselves. So Catherine, I'm going to let you (laughs) say more about that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I feel like for myself personally, like, you know, we went into a pandemic and I was pregnant (laughs) and then I had a baby and then I had a real rough year in terms of getting back into things. And then I finally started kind of getting back in the swing of writing. And then I've gotten like one, two punched with other things going on in my family and just things have been really hard mentally, emotionally, you know, all those sorts of things. And I've found myself making lots of excuses for why I can't sit down and write, or I just don't feel like it, or I'm too tired, or that feels too hard right now. And all of these things. And I think to some extent there is that, right. There's the be gentle on yourself and don't, you know, try, but then there's also the get your butt in the chair. (laughs) And right, because there's also that the writing itself feeds my soul. <laughs> you know what I yes. mean? Um, so it's 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 kind of a, a both and, right? It's yes, it's been hard, but how long do I get to use the excuse that I'm tired or that it's been hard or mm-hmm. that there's just too much going on and I can't handle it? Um, and yeah, that's where I'm at right now. What about you, Alita? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I have had similar struggles, not not similar situations in my life mm-hmm. per se, but similar um okay, how long do I get to give myself a pass because of this that or the other mm-hmm. versus just making it happen and actually very recently like a week ago, basically, you know, I was processing this situation, you know, and what, what I landed on is that I need to treat my writing the way I treat my responsibilities to other people, which Mm -hmm. is to say, like a job, even though I don't like that phrase, but like a job in the sense that I'm committing myself to a certain amount of time to the process, to doing whatever it takes. But the reason that's a helpful thing for me is because in thinking about all the things I do and all of the stuff vying for my time and attention, writing is the thing I do for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, it feeds your soul. So if I don't prioritize that, nobody's going to prioritize it for me. Mm -mm. And it's up to me Mm -hmm. to give it the amount of myself I think it deserves. And so for me to say, I want to be doing this. I need to be doing this. I, you know, this thing, these projects deserve my time and effort. And Mm -hmm. then to make excuses to not do it or to let those hours slip away or to, you know, not put the real effort into creating the structure I need to actually make it happen. It all just comes back to me. And Mm -hmm. I think I have felt bad about that Mm -hmm. disparity between what I want and what I do for long enough. Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So it's like, okay, no, I just, it might not be easy. It might take time to make it a routine or a habit, but you know, yeah. the sort of like up and down in and out isn't it, working. It doesn't work. No. And mm-hmm. you can say all you want, like, oh, I just write whenever I have a chance, <laughs> like pointing at myself here. But I think I do my best work when I don't write whenever I have a chance. I do my best work when I sit down and say for 45 minutes every day at two o'clock, I'm going to write. Right. And, and even though it's 
maybe hard or, oh, the baby didn't sleep as long as I wanted her to. And now I've got two kids running around, but you know, they're at an age now where I don't have that excuse that I used to have. And I kind of use it anyway, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and that's, I fully just, I feel you on that. It's like, at what point do I say, but you really do want this. So why are you not doing it? Like what, Mm -hmm. what really is the thing that's holding you back? And, um, I used to journal all the time. I mean, I mean, like had a notebook with me writing just all the time, just everything that popped into my head. Like I'd have it next to me on my desk at work, or I'd be like walking down the grocery aisle and just like pull my journal out. Like I just always had it. And then after Aria was born, it just kind of wasn't as convenient to carry it around. I stopped writing as much. And even that, that I used to just love has kind of fallen by the wayside. I still journal, but not with nearly the frequency (laughs) that I did. I used to go through like three to four journal books a year. And now I'm like lucky if I get through one. Um, So it's just the things like that, that you have to say, okay, now wait a second. Like what really is holding you back from doing something that you used to just do because Mm -hmm. you loved it and it made you happy or it fulfilled something or it took something out of you that you didn't want. Like the journaling was a lot of like getting the thoughts out of my head. And then I wonder why I can't sleep. Well, maybe because you haven't journaled, (laughs) you know, but things like that, where you have these things in your life for a reason. And then when they fall off, you kind of have to examine why, why are you letting this slide? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you looked at the, why do you have, have you come (laughs) up with an answer for yourself on what it is? Yeah, I'm I'm realizing how much I'm confronting fear at this point. And mm-hmm. I I have a feeling that for a lot of people it's fear in different ways, right? Yes. <laughs> it may not yeah. all be the same level of fear, but to some extent I fear being good at it. <laughs> you know, I fear mm-hmm. um, you know, pe- giving it to people to read and having them really like it because then that means I have to keep going or I have to commit this or I have to do that. You know, like there's just like all these different little fears, right? Right now I think it's the fear of if I'm doing that then I'm not doing this. And if, you know, what does that mean repercussions wise for everything else in my life? And is that something I'm willing to give up? Or, you know, there's a lot of just little fears that kind of pile up into me not moving mm-hmm. and me not moving forward. And, and I've realized in the past couple of years that when I get overwhelmed, I paralyze myself. And it's been very easy with writing to be like, well, I still have to do this and this and this and this and this, and it's just a short story. So that's just too much. And I'm just going to leave it for tomorrow (laughs) because I'm overwhelmed and I'm afraid that it's not as good as I want it to be. And I'm afraid that I can't do this, or I'm afraid that I will be able to do this. And then what does that mean? And then I'm afraid that if I send it to her, you know, there's just so many little fears that compound Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. turn into me just sitting here watching YouTube while I'm supposed to be writing. (laughs) I blame the phones. It's YouTube I do too. <laughs> oh man. Yes, I do think so. I want to come back to fear it, but I do think that our devices play a role in our distractibility. I mean, 100%. I 100%. Oh my gosh. It, I call it micro distractions because if mm-hmm. I think, oh, well, I'm going to be standing in my kitchen for 15 minutes while I put my lunch together. So I'll just find something and play it right. in the backgrounds for entertainment so I can listen for information. Yes. But it might take five minutes to find the thing I want to <laughs> listen to. Right. And you know, if that happens four times a day, that's 20 minutes I could have been productive on you totally. name it. Yeah. You know, one hundred percent. Yeah, I do struggle with that, but I think you are totally right on that it's fear, fear of success, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of outshining somebody in your family life or, you know, all the different things at play. I think it comes down to a fear and like, if we don't finish this project, then we don't have to put it out into the world, then Mm -hmm. we can't be a success or we can't be a failure or, Mm -hmm. you know, we can't um, face the revision process or we can't spend the money on an editor. We can't, whatever, whatever it is that we won't have to speak to our spouse about it or talk to our family about it, or, you know, tell, be able to tell people what you're writing. (laughs) 
right? <laughs> what are you writing? Oh, don't worry about it. Just, I'm never going to finish it. It's a much easier conversation than, oh, well, let me tell you what I'm writing about. <laughs> Yes. Oh, you don't want me to bore you with that old thing. Hey, exactly. Yeah. I've been working it's on only a my time. passion project that right? I devoted myself to, except when I'm, you know, flipping yes. through YouTube videos. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, for me, it was also fear and probably about half a dozen of them. And Mm -hmm. You know, there's that when we thing, mm -hmm. like I will do it when, mm -hmm. or like when I have a contract and a book deal, then <laughs> someone's going to be paying me to do it. So then it's my right. job. So then I'll do it all the time. Or when I'm working with an editor, or when I'm taking a class or when I'm right. And mm -hmm. It's just not true it's no. because you'll never make that when we happen, right? So if you're not writing to in the first place and how are you going to say, when I have an agent, I will write, mm -hmm. I'll finish the book. Like, when are you going to go do that? Well, you're not because you're not writing. So you aren't confident in your writing. You don't have something to present and you're never going to present it. So then you won't have an agent. So you'll never have to write your book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's that logic that cycles in your brain. So yeah, that's yes. so paralyzing that and and it's something that you just need to like exercise, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Just get it out, let it go. And I don't say, I'm not going to say I'm good at it. Right. Mm -hmm. But I know that I need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we need to exercise it and we need to exorcise it right? yes. as well. <laughs> like we need to get the fear or whatever that hurdle is out in front of us where we can examine it and be like, oh, you know, this subconscious BS, mm -hmm. I need to, I need to get over it, whatever that means, whether it means just seeing it for what it is or actually talking to a therapist or something, mm -hmm. it depends. But if you don't get it out, you can try productivity hacks and you can try setting alarms mm -hmm. and reminders and talking to your spouse about supporting your time Mm -hmm. you know, schedule and stuff, but it's the self-sabotage that does us in. And that's got nothing to do with anybody else. <laughs> nope. Yep. 100%. <laughs> and that's the problem, isn't it? Like mm -hmm. when you're not writing and you realize it's really just on yourself. So. Yes, it is the problem. It's also the solution though, mm -hmm. which is good. You know, I mean, the thing that has to be exercised can be challenging. There can be layers to that and stuff deep in the past and, you know, childhood mm -hmm. stuff, like who knows what you're going to be dealing with. But if you really, truly want this to be the writer, if you don't get that stuff out, mm -hmm. the rest of it won't make as an iota of difference. I mean, what I'm doing right now is getting out of bed by 5.30 so I can be at my writing by six and write till 10, so four hours. Nice. Yeah, and then if I get coffee or deal with the dog or something during those four hours, I push it back so it might be mm -hmm. 10.30 or 10.45 or whatever I need. Um, and, you know, it there's a domino effect throughout my life because if I don't go to bed in time to get out of bed at five 30, mm -hmm. then there goes my writing time. Right. Right. And if I don't make the effort to make that sleep situation, an actual pattern, I'm not going to be able to make my writing time a pattern, mm -hmm. you know, and I can't, do that five days a week and then be up till midnight on Friday and Saturday and get up at, <laughs> you know, five, five 30 yep. the next day like that. So it's really easy to say, I'm just going to get up early and spend this time writing, but making it happen consistently is more complicated. Are you ready to take your story craft to the next level? StoryWorks Fiction Online School has courses available 
right now, from micro courses on character traits to master level workshops on plot and building characters. There are also live workshops with your instructor in the classroom with you every week, guiding your progress and workshopping your manuscripts along the way. All students enrolled in StoryWorks Fiction, whether active in a class or not, can take advantage of the monthly free live Q&A calls with Alita. Check out storyworksfiction.com today and take your story craft to the next level. Yeah. And I do think, especially for me, my routines, if I can hit one thing, then I'll hit the next thing. And if I hit that thing, then I'll hit the next thing. Right. And, and I know that's like, it feels like really overwhelming, (laughs) but if I just follow like, okay, like I did this by this, right. Did accomplish this today. Then a lot of times by the time I get to my writing time, because unfortunately I I can't, I just don't have the luxury of early mornings. (laughs) Um, it's, it's like, okay, like, I feel like I can sit down and do this, but like, if other things haven't happened properly, then it, it throws everything off. It throws my whole day off. So it's getting even the little things right throughout the day to line all that up. And it's not just that for writing, it's for a lot of my other habits in my life too. Right. But the prioritizing the writing needs to be more front and center for me Mm -hmm. right now. And I know that even accomplishing that is going to make the rest of my evening go so much smoother because I'll feel like, Hey, I did that thing that I really wanted to do rather than, Hey, I sat and like, my excuse is always, I just need an hour because my brain is exploding because I've been dealing with these (laughs) children or I've been running errands or I've been cleaning the house or, you know, whatever it is, I've been teaching piano or prepping for this. And it's like, not really, if I took that hour and I invested it in writing, I would actually have more energy coming out of it than if I didn't, because I was doing what I wanted to be doing rather than just sitting and doing nothing, you know, whatever that nothing may look like watching TV or scrolling through Facebook or scrolling through YouTube, (laughs) you know, whatever Mm -hmm. that was. So it's like recognizing when my trigger is to move away from what I really want to be doing and then moving it back into, no, 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 just do what you really want to do. And then coming out of that, I always feel way better. Right. Right. So it's recognizing the trigger before it happens, whether Mm -hmm. that's I got up on time, my alarm went off, I got up, I got my cup of coffee. We managed to get outside and take the kids out and run them around or, you know, whatever. And then I'll, hey, look, writing feels easier. And then dinner feels easier. (laughs) Doing the dishes feels easier because everything kind of coalesces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Yes. I think having like one primary goal Mm -hmm. for the day that you accomplish can be such a boost to like Mm -hmm. the whole system. You know, it's like you were saying things sort of fall into place when you stay on top of these little things and it it doesn't take much going wrong for the whole system to fall apart. apart. Yeah. (laughs) But then if I say, okay, the one thing I really want to happen today is I'm going to get my workout in, or I'm going to get, you know, this writing time in, or I'm going to submit an essay to three journals. If I get Mm -hmm. that one thing done, then at the end of the day, I can say, well, I got my primary goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And then that spares me the grief I give myself. Yes. (laughs) If I don't, and how much better to say, I got one thing done today that mattered that I chose to get done. Right. Then, wow. Today was a waste today. Just <laughs> fell apart. Yes. Great. What was the point of today? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't have that to-do list. That's 12 or 14 points long. <laughs> There's just, you can't No, I love that. And I think when we were talking to the two ladies at the beginning, Carissa, I think was the one who said that that just have that one priority or that Mm, she has three mm -hmm. things that rotate. Right. And I so resonated with that, that, you know, sometimes it's, I got to clean my house and I got to take care of my kids. And that's today. Cause if that doesn't happen, balance is not restored, but I have other days where I don't need to focus on cleaning the house so I can just take care of the kids and do my writing. And then, Hey, still feeling really balanced at the end of the day, like things got done kids are happy and I got my writing done or kids are happy and my house is clean. And like those, having those rotating, my kids don't ever fall off the plate. That's the problem. (laughs) 
Well, I mean, they could, if you have like a day where, you know, oh, they're going to grandma and grandpa's today. Like, so today I can clean my house and write. (laughs) What? Yes, I know. (laughs) (laughs) I know. (laughs) But I think that has been, as I've been kind of examining this as to how am I supposed to do this, that that really has been helpful. And I, I totally hear that one priority or two things, main things that you're focusing on. Cause I just mm-hmm. feel like at least right now for me and probably actually for everybody like that, you can't just narrow it down to, if I only do one thing today, it's like, well, I should probably make dinner because <laughs> <laughs> that's where my brain would go. Well, I should probably make dinner. That would be a great thing to finish. <laughs> yes. But I think having the one thing as the one thing that it doesn't mean you only do one thing a day. It just means that there's one thing that you are going to commit to getting done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, if you've got your three rotating, you know, buckets of priorities, like family, household and Mm -hmm. writing, right. Well, you might have one thing that's take the kids to the park that day, Mm -hmm. or you might have the one thing that's, you know, do your meal planning for the week or, or it might be Mm -hmm. the writing or the workout or the whatever. So you could still have one thing per day that is within those rotating Mm -hmm. needs that you're always going to be focused on. Right. Yeah. And just having that one thing doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to get other things done too. And that's no, you have to typically, no, I know, (laughs) but that's typically what I find too, is if I have that one thing, like, okay, taking the kids to the park today and we do that and we accomplish it and we get home and now the kids are exhausted and they're zonked and I've got one down and the other one's just chilling with her stuffies. I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to write, you know? So there's, there's that it feeds off of itself, which is a benefit. (laughs) Yes. Because you got that one priority done. You feel successful. You're successful already. Your day is Mm -hmm. already a success. So there's really no way you can fail yourself at that point. Totally. Yes. And something else I find that helps a while ago, I heard somebody say he sets up his coffee before he goes to bed because he's Mm -hmm. being nice to his future self. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I really like that. And it's such a small thing, but it makes a difference when I wake up and I use a French press when I wake up and I just have to turn on the burner and wait for the water to boil to start Mm -hmm. the process. I feel so much happier than when I've got to get yesterday's grounds out of the French press pot and rinse it out and fill it up and put it in a kettle and then turn the burner on. Yeah. So yeah, when I'm going to bed, I'm like, Oh, I'm being nice to my future self. Look at what I'm doing here. This is so cool. (laughs) Isn't that so novel though? Like be nice to your future self and like, think about that in terms of writing. Hey, I cleaned my desk up so that tomorrow my desk will be clean so I can just Mm -hmm. sit down and write or, you know, whatever it is, you know, that one chore that's going to be procrastination station for you or, oh man, I have to do that. Then I'm not going to write. But in a lot of times they're simple and they're easy. Like, putting your coffee together. It's so easy. I mean, it's simple, right? You're like, Oh, Hey, okay. three minutes or five minutes and I'm done. I'm ready for tomorrow morning. But the, you're, the next morning you're like, ah, Oh, yeah. isn't this wonderful? <laughs> it really is. I mean, it's such a little thing, but I really like it in the morning when mm-hmm. it's just turning on the burner. And then I've got, you know, a few minutes until the water boils to mm-hmm. whatever. And then seven minutes while it steeps and it's great. Oh, so pleasant. I, get, I know. I know. I get my <laughs> fireplace on and my spot on the couch ready and the lights just right. I have a mm-hmm. dimmer switch. So in the morning I don't have to like turn them up all the way right, right and kind of half light. It's yeah. It's keep that really subconscious nice. going too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else? <laughs> I'm trying to think what other ways we can, you know, work our way past our fears. Oh yeah. Because that's therapy. the biggest, <laughs> yeah, therapy. There is that, but I think, you know, some of them are just identifying that they're false. Right. And I feel like yes. for me, a lot of times I, I know I'm lying to myself, <laughs> in the moment, but I would rather believe the lie than, than move toward the truth. And, um, 
I set myself a goal this year to do some revision on some short stories and then move into some fresh stories. But I figured I'd kick myself off with things I had already written so that I could kind of ease back into the creative mindset and kind of work a little more in worlds that are already created, which, you know, was a good plan. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But I have gotten really close to finishing this short story that I was working on. And I um, kind of like halfway through the last scene right now on this revision. And I just kind of stopped. Right. And I mean, some of it's due to circumstances in my life, but a lot of it is just due to the fact, and I know it is that when I finish this, it's supposed to be done. (laughs) And I'm afraid of what done means because done mean. that's right. Exactly. (laughs) And I have told myself that I am not allowed to spend the rest of the year dinking around with one short story. I need to just call it done and move on to the next one because there's going to be a point where I know diminishing returns are happening, right? Mm -hmm. It's -hmm. not getting that much better. I'm moving a thing here or there, but it's not affecting enough to where I'm learning enough to keep going. And so I have had kind of set, oh my goodness, Aria. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then there's those interruptions. <laughs> <laughs> Case in point. <sighs> Case in point. Yes. Um, but it's like, I need to just set a hard deadline to say, no, you need to just be done with it and move on. No matter what, just send it to the people you were going to send it to and call it done. And I know because I told people, the people I was going to send it to, that I'm going to send it to them, that that fear of handing it over and calling it, quote unquote, done at least for Mm -hmm. now done is keeping me from finishing the last thousand words. So is it the fear of getting feedback that's either negative or points you into another round of heavy revision, or is it the fear of then I have to start a new project and. Oh no, it's definitely the former. Mm. Cause I I feel like I have spent so much time in this story (laughs) that I feel pretty good about where I'm at Mm -hmm. that I just don't want to have to mess with it again. Like, I don't mind having like them say, Oh, like this paragraph didn't make sense. You should probably tweak this. But if they say like, I don't like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I have to do a whole nother round of heavy, heavy revision. (laughs) Like I'm going to be like, (laughs) (laughs) so what if you give yourself permission to not do that round of revision? Like if you get it Mm. back and it's that kind of feedback, give yourself permission to put it in the drawer and Mm -hmm. do a new project and the story and the notes you receive are going to be there right? six months from now or whenever you Mm -hmm. feel like looking at it again. Yeah. I mean, that's really good advice if I hadn't already done that on this story before. (laughs) Um, because I, I feel like I did that already. And so that, that just, I want it to be done. I want to feel like I have completed it to where I can share it. And even if people don't like it, it's not because it's intrinsically flawed. It's that it's, they just not their cup of tea. That's what Mm -hmm. I want to feel like. And so I, I think in my, in the back of my brain, this is the first time I've really had a project where I feel that confident in where I'm at that I would just want people to accept it as finished art, like it or don't like it. <laughs> you uh-huh. know? And I, I'm afraid of that not being where it actually is. And now in my, in my back of my brain, I know if it's not, it's not the end of the world, but in my heart, <laughs> right? Yes. In my heart, I just want it to be done. Mm -hmm. Good, bad. Otherwise, I don't know. Like I'd I'd like it to be good enough to be done, I suppose is where I'm at. Sure. So are you sending it to quality readers? Because there are readers who will think, oh, she wants it fixed. So I need to tell Mm -hmm. her how to fix it. And there are readers who might not be a match for the story. And so they might not get it. Like I had a story once Mm -hmm. I took to a writing group that was a a fairy tale esque Mm -hmm. fantasy. And Mm -hmm. so it was heavy on the storyteller narrator. 
and exposition. And the people in this writing group were just not getting it. And their feedback mm-hmm. was constructive and valid, but it wasn't helping right. what I wanted For to do the with story. the story. Mm-hmm. Right. And then there was one guy who kind of on the sly gave me a note, like, I love this. I totally get it. I'm like, okay, see? It's, <laughs> right. So, you know, you can get feedback that's well-meaning or even good, but isn't necessarily helpful. And that can send us into a tailspin. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's a good question. So I have three gals that I'm sending it to and two of them are writers and one of them is just a very voracious reader, but all three of them kind of live in the same genres that I do, but also read widely. So they're not like locked in to fantasy science fiction kind of thing, but they do love the secondary world fiction. So there's kind of that they'll, they should, at least in theory, (laughs) be the people that I would want consuming my fiction. Um, but also they do at least, um, two of them have some technical skill and things to be able to point out if things are just really not working in the right way. So I'm hoping that I've got a couple of good, I mean, I guess they're more like beta reader style readers. Um, but I don't really know for sure. Cause we haven't, ever gotten to the point where any of us have things of this level to share with each other, if that makes mm-hmm. sense, sure. where it's gone through multiple, multiple ro- rounds of revision and, and feedback. Um, so it's kind of, it's new. And I think that in itself is a fear, right? Sure. I, I haven't done this before. So that's where I'm, I'm styming myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Well, so Last piece of advice, trust your gut. So whatever yeah. they give back to you, whether it's praise or criticism or a hot mess, mm-hmm. just, you know, assess it. And then mm-hmm. if it feels like it isn't true, yeah. you know, true for your story, true for your goals for this story, trust mm-hmm. your gut. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Also things that are hard, but you know, these are good Mm -hmm. things to learn. And as an artist, you do have to learn them. So it's, it's amazing how much I can teach this in music to other people, like feel it. Does it feel like it's done? (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I do in writing, I can't, I, I just don't have the same level of confidence. Um, but I do know that it's there. So hopefully I'll be able to work my way past it. And over the hurdles of the newness and the fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Catapult Mm -hmm. myself back into this. (laughs) Right. Right. Well, and whatever happens with this one short story, I hope you can not let it derail your Mm -hmm. motivation, your, what you're doing with your time and your life and how you're making space Mm -hmm. for your writing. Yeah, definitely. And that's, again, more lessons that I know I will need to learn Mm -hmm. (laughs) as I move through this writing life, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, rejection and disappointment are such a major (laughs) part of the writer's life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to get those, take those lumps and then be in a funk, but you know, to go back to what we were saying at the beginning, if I get in a funk because I get a rejection for something and then it screws up Mm -hmm. my morning routine, then that's throwing me off because of all of the dominoes that are falling, Mm -hmm. like the sleep schedule, like the work-life balance, like all Mm -hmm. of that other stuff. So if I let one thing impact this you know, right. <laughs> House exactly. of cards I'm building, it's all going to fall down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's, we need to learn what is that time frame that's acceptable for you. Right. And some people might need to take a day or a couple of days to just like get over it, but mm-hmm. <laughs> don't, don't let it become six months from now. Oh yeah. I should get back to that. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and I'm going into camping season, so I'll have a lot of Mm -hmm. days when I'm not going to be able to be at my desk or my computer and my sleep is going to be Mm -hmm. whatever 
nature, <laughs> yeah. whatever happens, you know, when you're sleeping on the ground outdoors. Um, so if I can make my at home routine rock solid, then that's going to make it easier to come back mm-hmm. and have those triggers. You know, it's like dogs don't generalize well. So when I was training Seva skills, I couldn't just train her in the living room. I had Mm -hmm. to train her in lots of rooms and outside and in public because otherwise she would only do it in one place. And I want Mm -hmm. like, I guess the, (laughs) I want to be able to do this everywhere, but I I don't know, maybe that's a horrible analogy. It popped into my head and now I'm like floundering with it. No, it's, I mean, if you're training your dog, right. And you train her at home to begin with, your hope is that she's so rock solid at home. When you take her everywhere else, you start minimizing the distractions of everywhere else. Right. And then she can do it everywhere. Can, you know, and and right now you're trying to get the initial training done, right. Train my mind. I can do this. I can do this every day. And then that way, when you start having the outside of home moments happen, like, there you go. You can do it yes. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no matter I what. Want, I want to be, <laughs> I want to be Pavlov and the bell and the dog, <laughs> you know? So I want to be like, oh, I'm home. A bell just rang. I'm writing. Okay, great. <laughs> right. So I want to get my cues set up and my routine set up and get, get the, you know, habitual mindset and the dedication Mm -hmm. solid so that when I am away from home, coming back doesn't just destroy everything I'm Mm -hmm. trying to accomplish here so that it's, it's built. And it's just like, yeah, the bell rings and I'm at my writing desk, you know, exactly. Exactly. There we go. There's a dog connection. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for listening to the StoryWorks Roundtable. Find all our shows, show notes, and videos at storyworkspodcast.com.